This is the Reluctant Leader Podcast, created because, through no fault of your own, you've become one. I'm your host, Mark Terrell, and I know how it feels when you're getting ground down by people issues, constantly firefighting, and wondering how on earth you ended up here. In each episode, I invite a guest to discuss a topic and give you three, sometimes more, top tips that will help you in your leadership role. They are experts in the field, and you'll find out why they do what they do and what took them down that path. For more resources to help you on your leadership journey, check out the reluctantleader.academy where you'll find details of how to join the Reluctant Leader success path. So let's see who's in the hot seat this week. Today I'm talking to Tiffany Schlein. Tiffany is an Emmy nominated filmmaker and founder of the Webby Awards. Her films and work have received many awards and distinctions, including the recent selection by the Albert Einstein Foundation Initiative and Book Genius, 100 Visions for the Future, a disruptive, innovative award from Topeka Film Festival, in Newsweek magazine's list of women shaping the 21st century, and NPR's list of best commencement speeches since 1776. She and her team have pioneered global days of film, discussion and action about important issues shaping our lives that unite over 200,000 live events all linked together online with speakers and one theme. Character Day explores questions and research around living a life of meaning and purpose with her films 30,000 Days and the Science of Character as the centrepiece. Hope you enjoy the chat we had about character and switching off and I'll catch you on the other side. So Tiffany, welcome to the Reluctant Leader podcast. Hi, it's great to be here. Um, we, I've been looking forward to this for some time. We've had a few hiccups along the way where we can not been able to get it together with different things getting in our way. Obviously, some major things going on at the moment. Um, but, but before we get stuck into the, the topic, um, I always ask my, my uh, guests uh, why they do what they do and what was the pivotal moment that took you down that path? That's a great question. Um, hmm. <laughs> like, There's so many different ways I can answer that, but... I, you know, I run a film studio in San Francisco um, that convenes these global days of film and conversation. And I think if you went back in my path, um, I'm very interested in neuroscience and science and psychology and how do you convey those ideas in a really compelling way in films. So I've made a lot of films on those subjects on uh, character and creativity and um, screen use, all sorts of those kinds of topics. And, and then I just wrote my first book um, called 24 six, the power of unplugging one day a week. And it's about my family's practice of turning off all screens one day a week. So I think if you were to look at a thread in my work, cause I, you know, make, make movies, I give talks, wrote a book um, and the events I do, they're all about on some level, what does it mean to be human? how to live a life that matters, and when does technology amplify who we are and when does it amputate um, who we are and how to distinguish the difference between the two. Right. I think if you were to see a thread. Okay. Now, I was uh, alerted to your work um, on a course I was doing, actually, where we were – the first thing I watched was The Science of Character. Um, mm. It's an eight-minute film, and I now share it with as many people I, I, as I can – because I think there's so much in it. And is that, where, where did that actual film come from? What was the inspiration? Yeah, I'm so glad you said that and thank you. I mean, that to me is the, is such a fun thing to do. Take a very complicated subject, like, um, you know, really that's about positive psychology and how radical it was for people to, instead of look at what's wrong with you, to look at what's right with you. And this is based on Marty Seligman and Peterson's work in positive psychology and growth mindset, and really take this huge topic and make it visual, accessible, and for all age groups. Because, you know, it's great to hear that you send it to everyone and people use it in college, elementary school, um, leadership training. So it really, ha that's my favorite kind of creative challenge is to make a film like that. So the way I first made that is I was, my mom's actually a psychologist. So I grew up really learning a lot about psychology from her. And my father was a surgeon who operated a lot about the brain and wrote about the brain. So I really grew up thinking and learning a lot from them about the brain. But when I learned about the positive psychology uh, research and work about 
24 character strengths and how you build them. And um, I thought that was such an exciting framework to share far and wide. Usually if I hear an exciting idea, my immediate impulse is like, how do I make this really accessible? And then how do I share it as far as possible for as many people as possible to engage with it? Mm. So we made that film. And then we ended up doing Character Day, which is a global day of film and conversation about character. I since have made, I also made a film called Brain Power, which is about early uh, childhood brain development. And then one that I'm just about to re-release called The Adaptable Mind. And it looks at what are the skills we need to flourish in the 21st century. And and that film, which is also a 10 minute film, Mm. not long. I like them to be short, so you have enough time to have a good discussion, but we Mm. have a lot of discussion materials around it. But that one actually has to do with the Ebola epidemic. So it feels very uh, pertinent. Have you seen that one? Yes, I have. And and, and just recently I mentioned that film because um, it talks about, you know, Mary Beth's story, um, which, I, which would be good for you mm-hmm. to, to actually probably just to outline what that was about. Yeah, well, she, um, there was an artist who during the Ebola epidemic was really asking how frightening it must be for people to see people in hazmat suits when they're dying or when they're really ill. And um, they don't see the faces of their caregivers who are caring so much for them and trying to get them better. So she had this great idea about putting photographs on the front of uh, healthcare workers' gowns. And it's this Mm -hmm. very powerful, beautiful story. And she ended up having it happen. Yeah. Um, so I really wanted to re-release that because again, we're seeing people in hazmat suits. We're hearing of people dying by themselves and just that humanity to bring the humanity back. Um, even while we're trying to keep everyone safe by while wearing protect, protective gear. Yeah. And, and obviously this is a podcast about leadership and Mary Beth shows some leadership and that she saw something that needed some attention. She had some burning desire to do something about something and she got it done, didn't she? Yeah. Yeah. And that is real leadership, especially right now. I'm finding Mm -hmm. that we're lacking some strong leadership here and a lot of people are rising up to fill that gap. And um, there's so many beautiful moments I've seen during the pandemic of really everyday people stepping up to be leaders and then more of our governors stepping up to be leaders and what it looks like when you are clear and you share your vulnerability, your concern, but you give a clear leadership path and being flexible to the changing information and acknowledging when you've made a mistake about something and then strongly mm-hmm. leading forward. So um, I love that the web can let it so now and um you know, it's a really, it's a really interesting time. I mean, I'm finding, and of course I'm concerned and worried. My brother's a doctor, my sister-in-law's a doctor, a lot of doctors in my family and really worried about for them and just what they're having to deal with. But, um, Mm -hmm. there's so many beautiful moments. Um, like I'll just give you an example my, I live in a, a a town across the Golden Gate Bridge in the Bay area, Mm -hmm. very far away from where you are, but you know, everyone's been isolating for actually, I, I think a lot longer than in England. I mean, we've been home now. This must be our fourth week. And um, one of the neighbors uh, said, let's all, uh, we live kind of in a rural area. Let's howl like coyotes at 8 p.m. in honor of all the healthcare workers. And it was such a simple gesture. But every night we go in our backyard and the whole town is howling. And it's such a sense of community. And it took just someone to have an idea and then put it forward and make it happen. And I just love that. I just, I'm loving all these moments of humanity that are, and leadership that are shining through. And, um, you know, of course that's, you know, I mean, there's there's lots of bigger examples. I was going to say, we do something a bit more reserved here and that's we go outside (laughs) and we clap on our front front doorstep um, in recognition, a bit like um, the Italians and the the Spanish have been doing just to recognize the, um, the role that the, the health service is um, playing at the moment and our recognition. Yeah. So, uh, it. yeah, so it's, it's, it is good. And we won't skip too far onto what happens after all this because it's too too fresh and too going on. But I think ultimately we're going to learn some big lessons in this period. Um, uh, and yeah. hopefully, um, you know, some good will come out of it and we'll change and adapt uh, um, to, to what we've learned. And hopefully I there'll be some so. good... Yeah. I think so. I mean, I've been reading a lot about the Spanish flu epidemic, and I actually think this is going to go along. It's going to last a lot longer than people think. I mean, I think I was just reading how in China the cases are coming back. So this idea of lockdown, I think, is going to be lasting a lot longer. And I think behavioral change, because that's what a lot of character and leadership is about, right? Behavioral mm-hmm. change. What makes someone change their behavior? And what makes a society change their behavior? 
And I think there's a great rebalancing happening because I know the reason I started unplugging from screens one day a week is I had a very dramatic moment in my life where I, my father died to brain cancer and, and my husband's and my daughter was born and it all happened within days. And it was very dramatic and it made me change my behavior and think, I don't like the way I'm living. I feel I'm distracted all the time on screens. We're going to start turning off screens every week. And we have for over 10 years. And this was the best thing I've ever done, which is why I eventually wrote a book about it. And I feel like we're in another one of those moments where the world is like grabbing everyone by the shoulders and saying, look at the way we're living. We're flying around. We're never really present. We're staring at screens all the time. We're not really paying attention to where we are. And pay attention to where you are. And, and how do you like the way we're living? Do we like the way we're treating the planet? I mean, the fact that we're ordering like a pencil on Amazon, is that a good use of resources? And I feel like um, it's a wake-up call. And I, I really hope we learn some big lessons here. Mm. It would be a shame if we didn't. Yeah, well, that, again, that will, that will boil down to leadership, people taking yeah. that lead and, you know, seeing something that they want to preserve, want to, you know, retain and doing something about it. Um, right. and, I, and I think um, my gut instinct is that those things will happen, um, you know, but who knows how long it's going to go on for. This is um, back end of March to 2020 at the moment. So for people that listen to this in the future, this is what the period we're talking about, very sort of first month or so of the um, coronavirus, coronavirus um, um, epidemic that's um, sweeping the, the, the world. So you've mentioned um, Science of Character, and you've also mentioned Adaptable Mind, which you're re-releasing. And there's one other video I've actually watched as well, and that's 30,000 Days. Mm. And I, mm. I tend to ask the question now, when I'm in a, if I get the opportunity, I say, can anybody tell me the significance of 30,000 Days? So <laughs> I'll, I'll let you um, okay. <laughs> share that if you like. Well, again, it was me finding this fact that most, if you live the average life expectancy, that's about 30,000 days. Mm -hmm. And I just loved thinking about that. Wow, 30,000 days. And I, I'm turning 50 next week, so I'm more than halfway done. <laughs> <laughs> and that really makes you think of life differently. So that's another 10-minute film we made. And I just thought of another one that I think you would really enjoy. Have you seen A Declaration of Interdependence? No, no, I'm not seeing uh, that one. We just released that. We released it last and we rewrote the Declaration of Independence and we wrote it as a Declaration of Independence and uh, it's very powerful to rewatch. And we're, I'm actually, any of your listeners, I'm doing a call for entries right now for a new movie. A lot of my movies that you're mentioning, I invite people around the world to send me videos of themselves answering some question that I'm asking or yeah. I'm wrestling with. So if anyone is, that's listening is interested just to, these are, I call them cloud films. I don't like mm -hmm. the term crowdsource. I like cloud source because it sounds more poetic. Yes. Um, but I, I often, I have an email list I've had for over 25 years and I invite people to make a movie with me. We're doing that right now. And um, they can just find out about it from my film studio website, which, which is letitripple.org, um, which is the nonprofit I run in San Francisco. But yeah, we have um, made quite a lot of films um, about kind of all the subjects that we're touching upon. In 30,000 Days, I do think a lot about death. Um, I think having my father die when I was so young, and um, I just think it makes you just realize how you don't know how many days you're here and how, how are you gonna live? How are you gonna lead? How are you gonna model behavior? Um, mm -hmm. and I think even, you know, parenting is so much about modeling behavior and, um, yeah, I think leadership is a really interesting thing to think about. And yeah. Uh, it's interesting you say that actually, when, when I talk about leadership, I tend, I tend to put it in a domestic role. So I talk about leadership as, okay. you know, with parents because most people can then relate to it because leadership is a concept. Most people think, well, that's a business thing, but Actually, leadership is nothing about business. It's about how we act, how we want to lead people. Ultimately, it's, it's leadership, so it's leading people in a direction. And I, and I guess uh, one of the things that you've you created is a following. Um, you've, you've mentioned about the Character Day. Do you want to expl explain what Character Day is? At, uh, yeah, year? and I'm so glad you talked about leadership in terms of the home because a lot of times when I talk about just that we unplug one day a week, 
you know, a lot of people complain their kids are on the screens too much or whatever, but they're just looking at you and you're on the screen too much and you're the parent. So parenting is so much modeling behavior. So I'm a big advocate. If you want your kids to do something, you got to do it too. And so make it a family thing. Mm. But character day, I, we started doing that after we made science of character because we wanted to have a big global conversation about the science of character. So it grew to over 200,000 events all over the world happen all on the same day. And they show our films. We have printed discussion materials, online discussion materials, and then we bring together leaders from all over the world to talk about um, the subject. So it's been very exciting. It grew so big that it was actually kind of taking over all of our time. Like the first year we had maybe 1,500 events. And then when it went to 200,000, it was like, we couldn't make films anymore. Well, no, it was a real, talk amazing. about leadership. It was one of those moments where, you know, I also founded something called the Webby Awards in my 20s, which is the Oscars of the internet. And it grew and grew and grew. And then suddenly I wanted to do something new and I, I eventually sold it. And it still happens every year. Actually, a lot of English, um, we give a lot of British winners. Mm. Um, but I found in my career, you know, I love creating something and then I build it and it grows and wonderful. It grows and it becomes so big, but then it, it doesn't allow me to do anything new. So we might this year, after doing Character Day for six years now, um, we might just let people do it on their own. So it won't be as much heavy lifting from us on our end. And just so we can make more movies because we have a, a new film series we're really excited about working on. And it's, it's interesting, you know, to also understand, I think when I was younger, you know, I thought you never stop doing something, never, never stop. But then I think as a leader, you understand, well, you have to know when it's time to try something new also. And when your work in that space, like I love that you've seen all my films. I have so many today on Twitter, like people were tweeting a film I made eight years ago and my films continue to do their work in the world. They don't require my energy anymore yeah. and yeah. they can continue to play. And then I get to go on and make a new film or write a new book or something. So that that's been, you know, something as I'm turning 50, I'm thinking about how do you um, create space and know when to, um, give yourself space to start something new. Yeah, but I'd say that all, all of your films I've seen, and I haven't seen obviously all of them, they are very thought provoking. They're obviously as a, as, a, as a message, and that makes people think. Uh, mm -hmm. And actually, how does that relate to how I am? And I've written down the question that comes up at the end of Science of Character, and that is, who do you want to be? Mm -hmm. And isn't that such an important thing? Um, and whether you're leading or not, um, what you uh, aspire to be is is so important as far as, as the way you live your life. Yeah, I've been thinking about that a lot as we've been in lockdown because I think so many people are defined by their careers and getting dressed and going to an office and and suddenly you're just at home. <laughs> it's like, who are you? You know, and a lot of us, I, I'm sure you're quite busy with your podcast and I've been doing a lot of talks um, on Zoom and various things, but ultimately we're stripped of a lot of our normal dressings of what we do. And it really comes down more to how do you want to be? How do you want to be in your home? How do you want to, what's your voice in the world? And I think that's a really good question to continue to ask all the time. Yeah, absolutely. And it links in with so many other things, isn't it? It's how you actually want to be seen, how you want to lead your life. And you've already mentioned about that end of life stuff. Um, we need to think about the legacy we leave. Uh, sounds a bit morbid, but actually, you know, what, what else is there to work towards? If, if you can't think about what you leave behind, then, you know, um, it's certainly something that drives me forward. And my, and my legacy is really important to me. I, I guess that's the mm. same for you. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. Thinking about what do you want to be remembered for? And yeah, I mean, I've been thinking about all the, you know, just turning 50, like I was supposed to have this big, uh, we're all going to travel somewhere and that that's been <laughs> not happening. <laughs> and no. then I'm like, what do I really want? I really want to see all the people I love on a zoom call right now. And, and, you know, my husband was like, they'll do a toast for you. And, you know, when people give you a toast on your birthday, what do they say? What means something to them about you? And how are you contributing to your family, to your community in the world? And um, I love being able to channel my creativity to these films that really reach far and wide. Um, and then even during the lockdown, I've been doing a baking class on Fridays, which is so simple, but it's been so much fun every Friday, 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Let's see what time would be in England. 
You'd be making late night bread. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. But it's been so much fun. And I think um, I, as much as I'm out there in the world, I love being at home and I love to cook and bake. And um, I've been really thinking, I know this is going to sound so unusual coming from a woman CEO, but I've been really enjoying housework too, which I'm like, what is it? I feel like I'm tending to my home in this whole new way this last three weeks that I've never had before. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm normally, you know, we're a dual parent working, juggling everything, but I you think... You know what I was going to say? I was saying to someone the other day about expectations and our expectations are now so much lower because we can't do certain things. We have to make the most of what we have here right. at home. So how do we do? We can either just mope around or we can say, right, how can we make, how can we be creative and make this actually something that we're going to remember? Uh, And there's a lovely video going around at the moment about someone that says, you know, I hope after this, you know, this is what we remember. And it it would be time that we spent with our loved ones. Uh, Exactly Um, what you just said. Oh, would you send that to me? Because the three questions we're asking people for this new film we're making, which any of your listeners can send me if they send it to me quickly is, and I thought maybe you can do it. Actually, I would love it if you did it. Okay, here's the question. One is, what are you scared about? Because let's acknowledge there is fear. The second one is, what's the best thing that can come from this? And I think that speaks to what you were just saying. What's the best that can come from humanity from this experience? And then the third one are, what are beautiful acts of kindness that you've seen? And, um, and then we're asking everyone to make this symbol, which in sign language means connected, which is two fingers together. Oh, yeah, I've shown you do. What is it? Yeah, like, like that. This. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. if you did that, Mark, I would love it. And, okay. Uh, but I think this sense of um, what are the questions we're asking right now? Yeah, how are we going to remember? This could be like it's an opportunity. And I think everyone could be like, oh my gosh, I can't leave the house. I, I feel like what an opportunity. We can't leave our house. Like, I think creatively, like I love creative constraints too. Um, but it, we're, we're living in a creative constraint. And how do you make, that's like why I like short films. That's a creative constraint. You can only mm. have eight minutes to tell the whole history of the science of character. And, and uh, of course, there's so many scary things happening. But you are home. You might be living alone. You might be with someone you love, with kids. And this is this incredible opportunity if you choose it to be. And for lessons to be learned, to appreciate where you are, to make the most of where you are, rise to the occasion. It's like how you respond to a situation is ultimately what defines you. Yeah. And that leads me nicely onto those key character traits that allow us to do that. Mm-hmm. Um, and you, you do highlight them in the sites of character, the seven traits which are will lead to us having a meaningful, happy life. Mm-hmm. Um, can you remember all seven of them? Are you- yeah. <laughs> um, well, it, it's based on that um, Paul Tuff wrote this book that there's seven character strengths that can kind of, if you can work on those or if you have those, you can get out of almost any situation, mm-hmm. like poverty or... So gratitude, and I'm a big believer, you know, I write in a gratitude journal in the morning and the evening, and it frames my day it helps me so much and I only really started doing that like I don't know seven years ago but it's just huge empathy um grit or perseverance um curiosity let's see this four (laughs) do you have them listed out what's the other three um self-control self-control oh yeah that's a really interesting one self-control as the homeschooling I've been thinking about that a lot because yeah yeah you know, can you have the discipline to stick to a schedule? I mean, there when there's no other people around, that's a lot of self-control. What other one? Um, so we've we run out that, we? You said gratitude. Said gratitude grit, grit, self-control. Curiosity. Um, <laughs> we should have got better prepared. But um, if you want to know. I made a long time ago. Uh, I think yeah. I so anybody listen to this, do you want to know what the actual seven are? Then <laughs> letitripple.org is where you'll find them and the Science of Character video. Um, well, you know, it's actually, it's interesting because there, there was some pushback onto that. There's just seven. I mean, first of all, I was so excited to learn that there was 24 character strengths by Seligman and Peterson, which led to the positive psychology movement. Yeah. But then um, there's other positive psychologists that said that's too many. It's too many to remember. Although I liked seeing that many. Um, and then 
you know, there's different schools of thought around character, but I like thinking of them as all levers that you have to work with. It's like your, your keyboard of your life that you can focus on gratitude. You'll feel more grateful, focus on empathy. You're going to feel more empathy. Mm. Um, if you want to change a behavior, practice more self-control and it's like a muscle, muscle memory. So I, I like thinking of it as all of these different things that I can work on. And we're yeah. all works in progress. That's another element to, I think, the science of character. And all of this is that if you look at life as it, you, we're living a work in progress every day, you're never done, you're never finished, you can always be working on yourself. Mm. And then there's this other quote that's from another movie I made. I'm Jewish and I made a Jewish version of the science of character called The Making of a Mensch, which has to do with a lot of Jewish ideas around it. And there's this quote by um, Israel Salanter, which is, at first I tried to change the world and I failed. Then I tried to change the community, my community and I failed. And then I tried to change my family and then I failed. And then I changed myself and I was able to change the world. And I love that idea that thinking about your character is not for self-indulgence or self-help or any of that. It's really so you can contribute best to your family, community, and world. So the more you understand your strengths and weaknesses and what you want to work on and what are the things that can make you behave better in the world it's going to just be helpful to every aspect of your life and you'll be able to contribute better as a mm. leader or just as a person. And, and that's a, and a great lesson for leadership in that, you know, don't try and t- try change others, change yourself and be the best person you can be. And ultimately yeah. that will lead for people to follow you. Um, yeah. and, and, and that's uh, as simple as it gets really. Um, yeah. Sadly, Tiffany, um, we've got to wrap things up in a few minutes because I know you've got to leave. Um, so I always ask my guests some top tips to leave our audience with. Um, we've covered quite a lot of stuff in that 25 minutes or so we've been talking. Is there anything okay. you want to wrap, wrap yeah. things up here's with, my, I suppose? Here's my thing as I'm turning 50 in a week. And um, I think the single greatest lesson I've learned in my life, and the reason why I ended up writing a book about it, is because it's free, simple, and ancient wisdom, is this idea of a day of rest, which we no longer have in our society. But the actual... And I don't come at it from a religious perspective because I am not religious. I am more of a cultural Jew. But the more I've learned about the concept of the Sabbath or a day of rest or Shabbat or whatever you want to call about it, every different culture has a different name for it. it there's so much wisdom in having a, a, your own network where you reflect, where you think about what you already have, what you want to work on. All these things we talked about, I feel like a full day off of screens each week is when I do all of that. My best work on that subject is when I really think and reflect and I'm not so reactive, but I'm more internal. And I think we need to create space for that. So that's why I wrote the book 24 six, which it's available in England. I, you know, there's an audio version that I read it, but I have all of my thoughts about that subject in there. But I think the biggest tip is to take breaks away from the screen and, um, Give yourself time to think and reflect and to write and just be. There's a lot of value in in giving your mind that kind of space. I don't think we do any of it anymore. I think in in this instance, I think one tip is more than enough. And I think it's a really, (laughs) really important message. And hopefully in the coming weeks, we will all learn that we need to switch off. And that's when we do our best work. And probably uh, that's what the world needs more of. Um, Tiffany, thank you ever so much for your time. I've really enjoyed it. And um, hopefully we will connect again at some point in the future. Oh, it was such a pleasure to see you over, we're doing this over a video Zoom, which is so nice. And I hope I meet you in person someday. Thank you for listening. Don't forget to check out the Reluctant Leader Academy. And if you get a chance, please leave a review on whichever platform you have been listening. And also share the love by sharing the episode with someone who would benefit. Leadership is a choice. If you have the right mindset, know the process to follow and the key skills to use at each point in the process, you have everything you need to leave a lasting legacy. Don't forget to put into action anything that has struck a chord in this episode. And until next time, be the best you can be.